Okay, now moving on to the uh, the remuneration system that is based on the work of the employee rather than time. That what we do is we take number of units produced as the basis to calculate the compensation that we will be paying to an employee. Now when we talk about calculating the compensation on output basis, we have three different methods. Number one, a straight piecework method. Okay. And then we have guaranteed piecework method. And lastly we have a differential piecework method. In a straight piecework method, whatever number of units produced will, will be multiplied with a particular rate. For example, an employee is paid for two dollars every unit, then suppose he has produced 100 units, then he will be paid two hundred dollars directly. And if he has not produced anything at all, he won't be getting anything. Okay, so simply more units produced, more will be the compensation. However, in a guaranteed piecework system or piecework method, what we do is there will be a portion of the wage that will be paid for sure, that will be fixed. Okay, and if he has not worked enough, that he will still be getting uh, that particular amount of wage. But if he works more, and proportionately has uh, earned more than that specific amount, then he will be getting his extra share as well. We'll be understanding that in a minute with an example. However, in case of differential piecework method, we'll be having a set rate of pay for a particular range of output. For example, for first 50 units, we have $1. For next 50 units, we have $2. For another 50 units, we have $3. Then another 50 units, we have $5. So this way, we have differential piecework or compensation rates for an employee. Let's have a look at an example, and we'll understand that in, in, in easily with that. All right, here is the question. And according to this, an employee works under a guaranteed wage system where the policy is that he would be getting at least $100 a day. Normally, he is paid at $2 per unit that he produces. In a month, his performance for each week is as follows. Week 1, 80 units. 2, 30, 3, 50 units. And in week 4, he produced 60 units. And we have to decide at how much compensation we'll be paying to this individual. Okay, so for week 1, on a normal basis, he produces 80 units, and each unit is paid at $2, so he will be paid at $160. Okay. In week 2, however, he produced 30 units, and if we multiply it with 2, it gets to $60. But he'll be paid 100 for this one. Okay. Because he is guaranteed to pay $100 a day a week. It should be a week. For week three, he has produced 50 units. Multiply by two, it comes up 100. So it doesn't make any difference if, if he's getting on the number of units produced or guaranteed. It's one of the same thing. For week four, he has produced 60 units and it comes up $120. So he will be paid $120. So in a month, the total wage will be the sum of the wage he has received or he, is, is, uh, he has the right to receive in each week. So this is how, under a guaranteed wage scheme, we will be receiving the wage okay however in case of differential piecework method what we have is we'll be having 
the different rates for different range of output. So let's have a look at one of the question and then we'll be able to understand it completely. Okay, here we have a question and in this we have two employees, Hassan and Hassan, that are working in a differential piecework method. Now the calculation or the basis of calculation of wage for both of them are is a bit different. Hassan's wage is calculated uh, as $1 per unit if production remains below 100 units level. But if he produces uh, between uh, 100 and 200 marks, then he will be calculated, he will be compensated at the rate of $2 per unit produced. And if his output is between 200 and 300 units level, then he will be compensated at $3 per unit. Whereas Hassan's wage is calculated $1 for production up to 100 units. And then for anything or any unit produced after the 100th unit up to next 100, like that is for additional 100, he will be paid $2. Okay? Now how is it different from the way we are calculating Hassan's wage is that in this case we'll be looking at the range in which the output is falling and then we'll be applying a singular rate whereas in here we'll be calculating the compensation for first hundred units separately and next 100 units on $2 per unit and then next 100 units at $3 per unit. Now the requirement is calculate the wage of Hassan and Hassan if their output is 250 and 280 respectively. Okay, so let's see how we're going to do that. In case of Hassan, he has produced 250 units. Now this is falling in the third category. So we'll simply be multiplying 250 with 3. Okay, and this will give us the wage, total wage of $750. Whereas in case of Hassan, first 100 units will be calculated on $1 basis. It gives us $100. Next 100, that is from 101 to 200, will be calculated $2 per unit. This gives us 200. And the rest of 80, that means the rest 80, are calculated at three dollars per unit which gives us 240 units so in total we have 240 200 440 440 plus 100 gives us 540 okay so this is the example of differential piecework method and you know both of these methods can be examined by the examiner we have other methods as well under differential piecework method, but this is so far what we have for the syllabus. All right, so that concludes our discussion on the incentive schemes related to labor. The other small topic that is left now is labor turnover, which I will be discussing in our next class.